namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa purpose of the practice is for complete freedom from suffering something that we need to remember to bear in mind nothing else not any less than any lesser than that for a lot of people meditation is about calming the mind even for those people who have never meditated before that's all they understand about meditation to calm down the mind Indeed, this is necessary for the ultimate purpose of the practice. But this itself is far from, still far from the true uh, goal of the practice. Still far. To be free from suffering, we need to have wisdom we need to gain law wisdom we need to get wisdom create wisdom and then also uh, i mean get my sensing get from outside of us from other people from books or from what we hear from others and then also we need to gain insight that is gain wisdom from our own practice without these there's no possibility for the ending of suffering. So it's important to bear this in mind. Because if you don't, then you sit down, all you want is some calmness. Anything that disturbs you, you don't want to deal with that. You just want your calmness. You don't want to watch defilements. You don't want to understand things. And because of that, you'll never be free. That cannot happen. But although uh, that's what we say, uh, and that's true, this is, this is not something that we can uh, force to happen. It's not something that we can um, get very quickly. It's um, something that we need to uh, patiently do for a long, long time, <laughs> for a long, long time. You have to patiently learn how to practice in the first place. You have to patiently practice and to understand. It builds up. Really think about how long, how far more you, you have to go, you can get a bit depressed. It's like, this is nothing compared to what is needed. Yeah, so don't think about how, how long more, how far, when can we, oh, if people ask me, one day if I made it, how long before I can get enlightened? Uh? Oh, don't, <laughs> go, go away. <laughs> don't ask me this question. Go away. <laughs> no way can we can uh, set a time to this. Yeah. In fact, my, my teacher uh, gave this, use this story to describe, to, to explain this. It's like, let's say a person wants to learn Kung Fu and goes to a Kung Fu master and asks a Kung Fu master, okay, so uh, how long can it take before I become a Kung Fu master? Uh, then he said, five years. Five years are so long. Huh? Oh, can we make it two years? Huh? I said, in this case, uh, eight years. You understand? <laughs> yeah. More if faster you want it, the longer you'll take. So it's something that we need to not think about. In fact, we shouldn't even think about five years or eight years. Or you know, in the sutta, there is this sutta that talks about uh, seven years. In fact, you can do better. You can do seven months. In fact, better than that, you can do seven days. Okay. Uh, 
you can try. <laughs> you can try, right? But maybe possible seven days, but you meaning to say you have no break of your loss of awareness and then you are insights are coming, boom, 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 boom. Oh, okay, seven days can. Otherwise, <laughs> how? Yeah, five minutes awareness also cannot. <laughs> so what to talk about? Getting enlightened in seven days, forget it. Bimpon, the, the thing for us to... Uh, to focus on is whether or not we are doing it right. If we are doing it right, then we are moving along in, in this direction. It's enough. It's enough. Yeah. If you're moving in the right direction, it's enough. You, you don't have to worry about how long you'll take. You're, you're, you're getting closer and closer all the time if you're doing it right. You're moving in the right direction. So no need to think about when, when, oh, sit here for so long, I'm still not enlightened yet. <laughs> so just think in terms of the, um, the creating the right causes. Think in terms of the what you do, you know, what you are, what you're doing. Are you doing it right? If you're doing it right, then the results will be right. If you're doing it wrong, the results will be wrong. Um, if you're eager to get something, then you're definitely doing it wrong. This, this practice actually goes against our natural thinking or quite normal thinking. Normal thinking is that we must really work very hard and get somewhere, you know, uh, put in all our effort, push. Hokkien people say, I kind of attitude, go, 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 go. Uh, this practice is Strange is opposite, um, somewhat opposite. You do need to make effort. You need, do need to be diligent, but not diligent in pushing. In fact, diligent in not pushing. <laughs> diligent in learning to relax. Diligent in being patient. It's a different kind of diligence. So it, but our usual way of thinking, we need to make effort to be diligent, actually goes against uh, this practice. It defeats our practice. So we, we, we really have to relearn a lot of things in, in regards to uh, this practice. This process itself of Un, it's, it's a process of undoing, undoing a lot of habit. It, that, that itself will take us a long, long time. Like it, it won't go away uh, suddenly. It, it goes away bit by bit, bit by bit. In the Sutta, there is a case when uh, Vedramo Anuruddha, uh, one who is known for his divine eye, he can see heaven and hell and everything else. Uh, but at that time, he wasn't an Arahant yet. He was at the third stage. He was an Anagami. An Anagami does not have any ill will, does not have any sensual uh, desire. But he's not freed from, completely freed from suffering yet. There is still uh, certain defilements left. And he was trying, he was trying on his own. And then eventually he realized he, he needs some guidance. So he went to an Arahant. He went to Venro Sariputta. So he told him about his practice, you know, uh, for his interview. Lah. <laughs> so told him about his practice. Uh, so I was this and like that. And then well, I still cannot get there. <laughs> Man, I, I cannot remember exactly what it was, uh, what, what Venerable Sariputta, what, what uh, the conversation was. And there were three, three areas. I think I can remember two. Yeah, I don't remember the last one, another one. One was, uh, when you say like that, that's your conceit. Right? He was telling this <laughs> uh, person with, at, at this pretty, very high stage of awakening already. Yeah, uh, this one step. Uh, one stop, one, one, one stage less than the Arahan. Uh, that, that is a conceit because an Anagami still has conceit. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the word conceit may be not the right word. Conceit sounds like a very, very strong word. Uh, that is your ego. 
It's your ego, and ego uh, is wider this meaning. Then you want to this one you're thinking about getting there. That's your uh, greed, yeah, your desire. And another one I forgot. So meaning to say, I even at the third stage uh, of what you call sainthood of awakening, one can still have wrong attitude. <laughs> Anuruddha at that point still had wrong attitude. So what to speak of us? Yeah. So we need to check this attitude. We need don't think, oh, I checked my attitude already now, right? I to finish. Wrong attitude will come back very soon. It will come back. You wrong attitude go out in front and come back from behind. <laughs> so we need to check again. Are you having the right attitude? You need to check over and over and over. Sometimes people practice uh, very nicely already. Everything's nice, uh, going very well. Then they start to become impatient. Why nothing? I still wait for so long and no, no insight yet. <laughs> ah, there, wrong attitude came in. Yeah, it's very subtle. It's very subtle. It just come in quietly from behind. And you're already practicing wrong attitude and you still don't know. So it's important to check again and again. We really need a lot of patience. Two things that really, really we tend to forget. Wrong attitude and right, uh, this right attitude and right view. Yeah, it's where we will get it right and then we'll get it wrong again. And we get it right, we get it wrong again because the, the uh, Reason for that is still there. The underlying cause is still there. Yeah. So, so long as that is still there, we still have to check again and again. The underlying causes we cannot see because it didn't come up. So we only can see what has come up. So we can only deal with what we can see. Again and again and again and again. Can you do it? <laughs> again and again and again. It's like this person asks Shadow. So okay, I'm I'm aware or not right now already. I have, I have awareness. So what's next? And then Xiao Dong say, uh, more awareness. And then more awareness. And then more awareness. <laughs> Can you do it? Can you just keep doing things, doing this without expecting? This is difficult, huh? Doing things without expecting anything. It's not our usual thing. We want, we want to do something and get to see some results. Yeah, but this is can be doing a lot and zero, nothing. Actually, if for a beginner, if you learn to do it right, when you learn to do it right, you, the results, you can see results quite fast. Um, if you learn, if once you know how to do it and you have the uh, commitment to continue, you can see improvements and all you can even get insights but then it out later on it came comes to a certain point you find that this new insights start to not happen anymore yeah you kind of reach a plateau uh, and then really you need to uh, even more so patiently keep practicing but by then it will be easy for you because you would have already gained a good foundation of right attitude um, so you're not so much disturbed by wrong attitude anymore because your, your mind has changed you wouldn't have been able to gain insights if not for this if not for having a good foundation in right attitude it's not all completely right yet. You still can get wrong attitude coming in. You still can have wrong view coming in. But um, not as much as when you started. Far, far less than that. So practice becomes comfortable. But then it can also become... Um, you're just doing, doing, <laughs> and nothing new. Yeah. So at that time, really, you just need more uh, patience to keep, go, keep going, keep going. Although 
the practice requires a lot of patience to um, continually do. We'll be grateful. We will be very happy when you do see results. Mm. You can. We will be very um, grateful for all the conditions that brought that made this possible. Even sometimes you can meditate and then you find, wow, the mind is so peaceful. And it's so comfortable and all that. A lot, of, a lot of gratitude can arise at that time. You know, gratitude can arise that because you know this is not something that normal people get. Normal people uh, don't have such uh, opportunity. They don't get to experience this. So when you get to experience this steady state of mind, which is very wise, it knows not just about getting to a point where the mind is settled. Is you also firmly know how, firmly know that you know how to do it. Yeah, it's just like you firmly know, even you're not on the bicycle, you firmly know that you know how to ride a bicycle. You have that confidence. Yeah, and you with that confidence, you're not so afraid of suffering. Because you know what to do, you know how to handle it. Most people, ordinary people, are afraid of suffering and scared of suffering. They might be very wealthy, might be very famous, might be very good looking, but they're scared of suffering. They don't know what to do and they suffer. They can get into depression. They don't know how to get them get themselves out. So that's why. And how is that possible? Is how how is it possible that we we don't become like that? Is we have the wisdom, and wisdom comes from no practice, from learning, from uh, thinking about how to practice, from practicing and gaining experience. And you know, okay, this is how it works. This is how, this is why the suffering occurs. And this is how you can get out of suffering. You need this, you need that. In this situation, you do this. In that situation, you do that. Just as you know how to ride a bicycle, you don't ride a bicycle the same way all the time. It depends on the situation. Yeah, it's a windy road. You, you need to ride in a particular way. We're going uphill, you ride a particular way. If it's a bumpy road in another way. Um, so, when you really know, you know what to do. You have that confidence. Confidence, which is one of the five, uh, confidence, one of the five uh, faculties. So as you practice all, all this growth, confidence grows, your uh, energy or, or vitality, energy grows, and your mindfulness grows. Samadhi grows and Samadhi here, mindfulness means remembering and Samadhi here means uh, composure or collectedness and wisdom, or also translated as discernment. When we practice, we are cultivating all these. We are growing uh, at the same time. And as you practice, you can even watch these five faculties can see how strong they are uh, when, your, when your practice is very good. Your practice is uh, st uh, still early in the beginning of your practice. You're still not very uh, familiar yet. And you just have to content yourself with very basic things like watching, breathing, yeah, sensations. Uh, you have to start somewhere. Yeah? Don't, don't try to look for things that you cannot see. Just as the best, the fastest way is to be aware of what is most obvious to you right now. Yeah, and except for some situation, uh, if it's that most obvious thing is uh, watching that brings about too much uh, what what they call wrong attitude, like pain. Yeah, like these uncomfortable things, or something that's very very attractive to you. Uh, then you have to move away. But otherwise. When it comes to neutral things, uh, just know the most obvious thing. Very, very simple. But 
doing the simple thing over and over and over can be pretty boring. <laughs> I have eat, breathe in, in, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So, so, so boring, yeah? So how not to be bored, then you got to sometimes make it interesting for yourself. Yeah. So now you have to make meditation a bit of uh, a game. Like for example, I used to when I first went for a meditation retreat, walking up and down. After a while, our first day was very gung ho. Mm, wow, meditation. Try very hard. Dun, 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 dun. Second day, I well, still can. I was still young. Third day, I to. Mm. <laughs> this is very difficult. Huh? Hey. How many more days uh, before I leave? <laughs> it's not the thing about the last day. It's like countdown. Okay. All right, got four more days. Okay. Okay. La. Four more days only. All right. And later, three more days. Yes, three more days before I can go back and enjoy myself. Yeah. Because you're so bored. Yeah. So eventually you have to figure out a way of, to entertain yourself. <laughs> so, okay. So game. All right, let's see, I can, from here, I can get to that place, then end without losing my mindfulness. Okay, see, so cannot. Mm. Oh, I, I got it. I reached there and I didn't lose my mind. Okay, yay, one point. Okay, turn around. See, I can do it again or repeat. Go back to the other side and gain another point. So, uh, kind of a game, lah, so that uh, you don't feel so bored. Sometimes no choice, are too bored already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you can do you can do this actually um you can do whatever find your way whatever means and ways to uh, make yourself interested like for example my teacher would ask people so when you brush teeth uh, how do you brush your teeth uh, you brush teeth with one hand right yeah what do you do with the other hand so oh, some people start to think what do i do with the other hand uh? not too sure then they go and watch when they brush teeth they ah okay i the other hand i do this with my other hand yeah otherwise you don't know what i do with the other hand yeah. or you ask question like when you uh when you defecate and you go and squat yeah what come out what comes out first urine come out first or shit come out first <laughs> you ask this weird, weird question <laughs> so that okay she come out or, or urine come out so you you observe you check and watch yeah so when you eat what what do you do first yeah when you sit down to eat what, what's the first thing that you do do you know <laughs> so to stimulate interest yeah then you can last otherwise uh difficult but when your practice is going smoothly, uh, you, don't, you don't need to do this uh, anymore. It's no longer necessary. You won't get bored. When your practice is going smoothly, you won't get bored. It's impossible to get bored. You'll be very interested. And in, uh, because wrong attitude is not active, it's quite weak uh, or not present. So... Uh, when there's no wrong attitude, the, the mind is uh, accepting of everything. You know what's, what's boredom? You know what exactly is boredom? Okay, I won't tell you. Next time if you're bored, you check and see why it's boredom. Yeah. At that time when your practice is good, boredom doesn't happen. It just cannot happen. Why does it not happen? Uh, you find out for yourself. I don't want to say everything. Not, not, not good for a teacher to tell you everything. Better to let you find out. Okay. Um, I, I don't have much else to say. Um, just, these are just some base random uh, tips, random reminders uh, to remember certain things uh, make think make you reconsider certain things uh, we we need this we need all that to send our practice in the right direction okay so q a time this is the last day to ask questions so especially for those who have never asked uh, 
please do so.